All right, I, uh, I stopped by Walmart just to pick up some new uh, bulbs and I was installing the bulbs into the van when a guy comes up and he's asking me about my travels. And uh, apparently he's traveled up to the Arctic Circle, similar to what I'm trying to do next summer. Anyway, long story short, he offered his uh, tools and help if I needed anything. And I said, well, my furnace has been acting up and I'd like to blow it out with an air compressor, but I can't get one because I'm on the road and he has one. So I'm going to his place now. I didn't even get his name yet. And just like that, I've been taken in by strangers uh, from a Walmart parking lot. Just had a shower in their place, so I'm gonna do my laundry and I'm staying for dinner. Part of the family, just like the Maritimes, you know? Even though with Utah, it's the same kind of friendly. There's all kinds of people out there, and a lot of them are really great. So my host Dave is, is teaching me everything there is to know about hunting and gun culture right now, before it was adventure novels which actually he's got quite the library also take a look at this look at the look at all of these now i'm not a hunter and i've never been hunting it is on the bucket list i do want to do it at some point in my life but my god some of these animals are properly terrifying those right there are to get this on the fire first you have to pour powder in each one of these Oh, wow, they don't even take cartridges, they, they feed right in. powder in each one of those, a measured powder. Wow. Then you take a little wad, a little cotton wad, and poke it in there, on top there, and yeah. you ram that wad on top of the powder. Oh, and with that, that's the punch to punch it down. Like right? that. Okay. Then when that's, when you got your powder and your wad in there, then you take a bullet, a little round lead ball, put it in there, Ram that on top of the powder and wad. It has to be tighter, otherwise oh, you yeah. don't get enough. Then, with this like this, now you're not done yet. Then you have to take a little tiny cap, a little exploding cap. It's called a, uh, and fit it right on this nipple. Yeah. And I got all this stuff in that closet there. Poke it on that nipple. And then when that's all done, then you can fire it. That little nipple throws a spark to the powder which explodes and pushes the little wad against the bullet and it fires. And it really works good and it's fairly accurate. Feel can, I, can I see this? Wow. Oh my God. Yeah. That's a solid piece of metal. Yeah, and these are, um, and they come apart too. Right. And, and the, the powder is so corrosive that every time you fire this thing, let's say uh, you're done firing after a while and you shot 20 rounds, you have to take it all apart. It's been really fantastic hanging out with my host tonight. It's been it's been nice hanging out with you, is what I'm saying, to the camera. <laughs> no, it's all right. Uh, it's been really great hanging out with my host. Do you have any advice? We're all talking about going north because these two are experienced northern Arctic Circle travelers, and they have a truck camper rig. What do you call your rig? What is it? It's a Lance camper. A Lance camper. With a Chevy. Um Diesel. Diesel Chevy four. Three is it four wheel drive? Truck. Three quarter ton. Yeah, eleven thousand pounds altogether. That thing. Yeah. That's where it gets cold. Okay, so the the advice for the Arctic Circle is down comforters. Take enough of them mm -hmm. for and the you nights. Sleep in your clothes. Sleep. Pink flannel. Well, you have flannels. I'm already sleeping in my yeah. clothes, so I'm good. I got that one down. Uh, that's where it gets cold. Oh, and another thing. You're oh, gonna, yeah, you're, right here. Thank you. Another thing is. When it's really, really cold, when we were on the Dalton Highway at Galbraith Lake, headed towards Prudhoe Bay, we left it was 16 degrees. Well, the road is real sharp with shards because it's a gravel road. Right. Hunter to tire. I think had we waited till it warmed up a little bit, then it would have been such a brittle contact on the tire. Ah. So gravel in the cold is deadly to tires. Sharp. So Interesting. We when we went and that was in the end of August, but it got down to sixteen and we had snow. So that's one thing we thought about later that the road was so frozen and the tires were so cold and hard that it punctured. So you rode a float plane into the wilderness and up from Fairbanks west and north and got dropped off at a lake with a cabin for fishing. 
yeah. for fishing. But there were obviously we never saw bears, thank God. But I mean, I had an outhouse that was I wouldn't even I was scared to death because I I sat there day last <laughs> because I sat there while he was fishing with bear spray on my lap reading because I was afraid there. I mean, we're in nowhere. <laughs> I mean, they just drop you off, skim across the lake, drop you off, and you're done. And That's pick it. Pick you up three days later. You Bend for yourself. And a camper, you know, and camper Hope you food. packed enough Pop Tarts. And he, well, there's no toaster. <laughs> he just, um, everybody who goes there, I mean, it was mostly men, you could tell because it was absolutely filthy. So I spent time, like, organizing things. <sighs> and the sleeping, I did sleep on the top bunk because I was doing all that. I, I'll have to look that, that up. Bush plane, drop off, middle of nowhere, three yeah. days. Yeah, and Watch out for the mosquitoes. That was the Gina River Park in uh, Fairbanks. They, got, they have float planes there. You take off from the river. And... Well, I cannot believe my luck to meet those guys, Diane and Dave. Thank you so much. You guys are awesome. And they've actually invited me to their family's Thanksgiving dinner tomorrow. <laughs> just like, just so cool. Ah, this life. This is just the best life. Good night, everybody.